All right, the deep dark side of the SEC starting to show its ugly face and they're striking back against Coinbase. We're going to be breaking down exactly what they did in their report today and their response. Give you guys a full rundown. I think you'll like it. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get into it. I want to kind of showcase the, um, the, the response. So this was, of course, a brief for Respondent Securities and Exchange Commission from the SEC. It was basically on the petition of the writ of mandamus to the SEC. This was what Coinbase filed to essentially say, hey, we've, we were trying to get some answers and you haven't given us anything. And that's essentially where we are. What we're going to do is take this report, which is very long and, and you know detailed, break it down into some slides for you guys to understand. So I'm going to go over to this first slide and take a look. This is coming from the response itself, the one I just showed you. So this was you know the response to Coinbase. Coinbase filed its petition July 22, requesting that the commission proposed and adopt rules to govern the regulation of securities that are offered and traded via the digital native methods, including potential rules to identify which digital assets are securities. Now, some of the things we have outlined in the blue here um, are, again, some of the points that Coinbase was trying to make, but again, all this is in response by the SEC. Standards for the classification of crypto assets as securities, requirements of the issuance of crypto assets as securities, disclosure obligations of crypto asset security issuers, and then standards and registration requirements for trading crypto assets on national securities exchanges. It also goes into custody of crypto assets as a whole, uh, broker dealers who affect transactions in crypto securities, and then transfer agents who record changes in ownership of the crypto asset securities. And then last is clearing agency status as applied to the blockchain. So there's a lot of detail in here and really what it boiled down to, all these are reasonable. I think this is a, you know, somewhat of a good point, but the interesting thing is that the SEC responded to none of those from Coinbase of being able to get these kinds of clarifications, no response at all. So they come back in the response. And uh, if you go to slide two, uh, central question, evaluating Coinbase's claim, whether the agency's uh, delay is egregious as to warrant the mandamus. Uh, Coinbase also identified no such egregious delay warranting the extraordinary relief that it's seeking from the court. Coinbase cannot persuasively claim any cognizable harm from the fact that the commission has not acted on the petition. This, of course, is again the SEC responding to uh, Coinbase's um, claims. Coinbase is not entitled, this is where it gets kind of interesting, Coinbase is not entitled to the extraordinary relief it seeks. The party seeking a writ of mandamus bears the burden of proving that its right to issuance of the writ is clear and indisputable. So basically it's all on Coinbase to get this done, which um, it, you know, it's pretty clear SEC is going to have the upper hand in this when based on what they're doing so far. But they go on in this document to actually respond with, I think, what are delay threats overall. This is the slide that kind of breaks this down. Precedent in other circuits does not support the mandamus in this uh, circumstance either. Indeed, courts have found much longer delays reasonable. Declining to intervene withstanding, uh, now withstanding a 10-year delay and issuing a rule and a 20-year delay to achieve the rule's statutory objective, meaning Coinbase or SEC simply saying, hey, we could delay this up to 20 years. And I think this is, again, goes back into the kind of scenario. There's nobody in their right mind that would fight this for 20 years, which we'll get to in a second, because this is where it gets um, pretty, uh, pretty nasty by the SEC. And I think if more people understood what's actually happening here by you and me, investors that are uh, exposed in these markets, uh, I think it starts to get very clear and uh, concise. In the next breakout of this, this is our slide four, uh, Coinbase suggests that it will be harmed because it can't adequately structure its business. That's reasonable. Uh, and or business plan so that it can kind of start doing things in the future uh, if it doesn't get this new regulation. Uh, in assessing whether there is harm from delay, courts often give more weight to threats to health and safety. So the point being here is they don't really worry about the time. What they're worried about is there something that's urgent that is causing a threat and or safety to investors. I think all of us would agree that we are definitely in the health and safety you know, range right now, no matter what exchange you're in. It, all Health and safety is going to continue to be a big concern. In fact, it's probably 
the health of a, you know, whether it's a crypto exchange or any kind of platform out there that's utilizing crypto assets as a whole are going to benefit from this. But more importantly, the investors are going to benefit from these kinds of regulations. So again, not beneficial to individual investors, which is what the SEC is designed, their charter is to protect. Further into this document, this is our fifth slide breaking down uh, from this, again, all this coming from the document itself. The acknowledged complexity of Coinbase's proposals undermines its request for accelerated relief. Mainly what they said is Coinbase gave us all this crap that looks too complicated. Uh, Coinbase itself recognizes the enormity of the undertaking. Its petition co uh, contemplates a complete rethinking and reframing of existing security. So basically what they're saying is what Coinbase is trying to do is absolutely unattainable. No way that this could ever be done. It's too complex. And even Coinbase themselves have a, agreed that this is a very complex issue. So um, I don't know that I would, I mean, yes, in the way that Coinbase has a, a proposed this is there's a lot here for the SEC to do. But in reality, this is a massive undertaking because of the fact that we're dealing with an, a brand new asset class. So the fact that they, that's probably the mistake I would say that Coinbase made is they need to get, even though I know that you can't really guide, you know, people in the right direction, you have to kind of let them kind of come to their own conclusions, meaning the SEC. But I think at some point you're going to have to uh, create a much smoother path. This is a government official that you're dealing with. You've got to make it as simple as possible. And I think that's one of the challenges. Further into this document, this is our slide six. Uh, it, as a part of Coinbase or the commission's overall regulatory agenda, it's also pursuing a number of actions that concern crypto assets that are securities. These include inviting public comment on the application of securities exchange registration requirements uh, to purportedly centralized, decentralized finance systems transacting in crypto asset securities. Additionally, discussing application of certain rules in crypto asset securities, discussing cybersecurity risks related to these assets, and then addressing investment advisors, obligation to safeguard clients, crypto regulation securities, and then uh, requesting public comment concerning broker-dealer uh, customer orders for crypto assets. So a lot of discussing, just not a lot of doing, and that's, I think, the big thing here is there's a lot of narrative here that has been put in force should or be have been put forth by Coinbase in a way that the SEC could at least start to address some of these problems and they just simply have not. In fact, none, not one a single one of these was implemented uh, as a rule in his entire term in the SEC, meaning Gensler. So basically he's just been sitting on his hands. Uh, and that's the real question here. And I would love to get you guys' feedback. What's he waiting on? What is there something else? Is there a driving force behind this, an evil empire that truly is behind this? Uh, he proposed a lot of this after the uh, Coinbase uh, lawsuit as a whole. Let me kind of go to uh, a video of this. Let's take a look at this video right here. Earlier today, we put out a new proposal to do what Congress asked. Under the proposal, a qualified custodian would be subject to independent audits, certain documentation requirements, and yes, to segregate your assets into an account with your name on it. These updated rules would better help protect your and groundskeeper Willie's assets with advisors. The rules apply to crypto assets with advisors as well. Thus, that advisor would be required to keep your crypto with a qualified custodian, not on any crypto trading platform based on how they currently operate, but with a qualified custodian. Crypto companies may claim they can take proper custody of your assets, but when these companies fail, something that we've seen time and again Investors' assets often have disappeared or become the property of the failed company. And you as an investor end up stuck in line at the bankruptcy court. So beware, even if a crypto company claims that they custody your assets, it's not the same as qualified custody. Through our proposed rule, investors would get the time-tested protections and yes, qualified custodians, they deserve. So please weigh in on our proposal. All right, so a couple of points he made there, and I, and I would agree with some of what he's saying, 
But it's the framework that is the underlying initiative here, I think, that really should be in question. And what I mean by that is when he talks about qualified custodians, does he mean, you know, the fire blocks of the world? Does he mean banks or does he mean a whole new area? I think that there's a very good possibility that the SEC is vying for an alternative to qualified custodian to work with these exchanges, meaning the likelihood it's probably going to end up in some sort of financial system that's out there, whether it's a JP Morgan or others like that that could potentially get into this space. Um, which again, starts to centralize assets. Now, I don't know that any of, because he also made some pretty outlandish claims in there that, that, you know, these crypto companies are going to zero and all this. Yes, there's been a handful of bankruptcies, just like there has been in almost every industry out there, financial services. In what we've seen within the banking system, we've seen a lot more banks fail than we've seen crypto exchanges fail. So that in itself is, again, just, you know, scare speak from uh, Gensler as he's putting these silly videos together. I think the point is, yes, in, in, in principle, the idea is protect investors, make sure the securities uh, or the, uh, well, if they are securities, but make sure the assets are being secured by a qualified uh, custodian that they can't go out and do hanky-panky with your, you know, with your crypto assets, which is, uh, is, a, is a, you know, it's a concern and it's one that they should be, uh, but that's an easy thing to detect as a regulator. It's an easy thing to audit as a regulator. That's not something that is huge. So in this next slide, this is really the SEC, not necessarily, uh, they're not holding back uh, further into this. So look at this next one. This is a breakdown of uh, Coinbase's contention that the commission is unreasonably withholding a decision already made is meritless. So meaning that they're arguing the contract. Coinbase points to the comments from the commissioner's chair involving crypto assets. Those comments did not and could not constitute agency action denying Coinbase's rulemaking petition. The commission, uh, as a body of acts in relevant respects, through a major majority vote of, of the quorum of its five commissioners. Now, what they're simply saying here is that, yeah, Gary has been in public on video many times. I had met a lawman here on the show last week, and James and I got into this very thing, and he said that Gary's own words would basically be the undoing in this particular case, if it actually goes to a court. Um, and the reason is, is because Gensler has already out, out identified many assets as commodities. He's also identified other assets as not securities. So that in, it, in itself is already a problem around what this looks. So his, uh, his public profile or as, a, as a public official, yes, he should have those things used against him because he's the one that is utilizing it in, in terms of an assessing of the market itself. I understand that, you know, the principle of the rule going to effect still needs the commissioners to be able to align on that. But the point is, he's already made these kinds of decisions. I agree with Coinbase. So uh, why haven't it just been put up for a vote? Again, I, I think it goes back to there's an underlying force of where all of this is going. Let's get into the litigation side of this. So this is the next slide. Coinbase also uh, overlooks the extent to which the case-by-case -case litigation and rulemaking can uh, beneficially inform one another, uh, and that the petition should be de denied. This is coming, again, back from the uh, SEC. So uh, th bang, basically they, them saying that they're overlooking the extent to which the case-by-case -case litigation and rulemaking um, is going to benefit or inform one another. So again, SEC litigation is very expensive. This would basically mean that the Coinbase lawyers and Coinbase, has, along with other companies, would have to litigate into infinity. They'd have to be here fighting the SEC forever. So this is where regulatory compliance starts to play into this whole framework. Once that that is done, now a judge has something to rule on as opposed to this kind of quoted, you know, uh, vertical application of some compliance or regulation that's already in place. Further into this, I want to get into another clip we're going to play. This is from Gary Gensler basically talking with uh, Tom Barkin, uh, who's CEO officer of the Federal Reserve. Listen to what he had to say in this clip right here. This is interesting. Another pointed question on cryptocurrencies. Do you 2020 hindsight that the SEC fell behind in enforcement regarding cryptocurrencies? I don't know, Tom. I think we've brought about 140 cases, um, uh, 80 or so before I was uh, so honored to be in this job. So my predecessors and the rest su subsequently, 
Um, but, but there was this field that arose where the investing public 24 hours a day, seven days a week around the globe, this is not just a US market, uh, it's largely an international market, is investing their hard earned money hoping for a better future. And that in, that in there lies uh, the core of what a security is. That's, that's as Thurgood Marshall wrote about and I mentioned earlier. It, it, it's a false narrative to say that these things are uh, that decentralized. They tend towards centralization. You can find a website for nearly, if there's, if there's 12,000 or 23,000 tokens, you can find some group of entrepreneurs in a website, in a Reddit channel, in a Twitter channel, around most of these, again, without prejudging any one of them. And then the intermediaries, just as Congress said that we had to oversee broker dealers and exchanges and clearing houses for other securities, you'd want us to do that here. Uh, you saw uh, a series of actions that we've taken in that regard. But again, we stand ready to help those intermediaries uh, come into compliance. I would say that their business models, though, tend to be built on non-compliance. Their business models tend to be built on taking customer funds, commingling it, and having, they're rife with conflicts, Tom. Like, and I would note these recent banking uh, issues in March and so forth, out of the, you know, however you want to count at the four banks that uh, uh, um, failed, uh, two of them had significant crypto books. The third one had a significant uh, stable coin issuer uh, put their deposits there, and it actually led to uh, a sort of a, a de-pegging, it was called, for the second largest stable coin operator. So there was even some interconnectedness in crypto markets and crypto actors with at least uh, three of these banks. All right, so a lot to unwrap there, but I think the point he gets into, he generalizes a lot in that statement, meaning he doesn't really pinpoint in on the scenario. He also references as being a global market, which it is, and the reality is that he doesn't even mention the term Bitcoin, because Bitcoin obviously is a clear commodity, and it isn't, it is completely decentralized. The opportunity for Ethereum kind of lies in the same scenario. What he's talking about with SVB is very simple. That was a bank run that was initiated not by crypto, but by what was happening within the valley. And that in itself started this bank run, which of course initiated a lot of things that we're now discovering about the banking system, meaning all of these unreal unrealized losses, as well as the potential bank walk that could be going on right now, mainly because it's a flight of capital to, to better performing assets, such as money markets and many other assets. So this is, has nothing to do with the banking industry. Uh, he's just using that as cover and then he goes into the global markets, which he has no jurisdiction over, and trying to go in with the scenarios that these companies are commingling funds, scenarios of that nature. All right, that has been proven that that has been the case. But the whole beauty of this is all you'd have to do is write that into regulation. Once an audit is done, you've got verification that these kind of things in. Believe me, every one of these crypto companies want access to the United States because it's the largest market for this. And if that is one of the parameters that needs to be implemented in a regulatory framework, you would have compliance by most of the actors that are in the space because they want to stay in the space. Let's remember how many companies in Wall Street are doing the exact same thing. They are doing it and their situation is, is they're doing it with regulation in place and doing it anyway which is what the SEC should be doing right now, is governing, not governing, but implementing regulatory framework that continues to align with what's happening in the other securities market to make all this work. So anyway, point being is, is he's sidestepping a lot of points here. He's getting to a uh, more generalized uh, response on this, not real accurate in terms of, you know, zoning in on the actual crypto communities themselves. Just my thoughts on this. So remember, ending up on this, that we are now way far behind here, guys. EU's Mika now gets a unanimous nod from the European Council. This is exactly what everybody has been concerned about, and that is the rampant exodus of innovation that's going to be happening in the tech space led by blockchain companies 
and it is already starting to occur in the EU. So I don't know what's holding these guys back unless it is a simple thing. We need our buddies and pals to get a framework in place before we start laying out the regulation alignment so that they can actually be the ones who benefit from all of this. I'd love to get your comments. Always appreciate those. Make sure and drop them down below. If you're listening in on the podcast, make sure and come over here to the YouTube channel. It's where we do a lot of these analysis and you get a chance to see all these slides that we just went through and uh, hopefully make your own decision on how you think it's going. Number one thing though you need to be doing is talking to your lawmakers, all of the people that represent you in your city, your business, your, your community, because this is going to be a fight, guys. We are in for a true war with the crypto army, and it's real. So your help needs to be out there. All right, you guys, if not in the Diamond Circle, get in now. That's another place that you can also be aware of this because it starts that process of learning, additional content, all that good stuff. Reach me out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.